40 years ago, a train with just one carriage was waiting at a country railway station in Sussex. The place was almost deserted, except for a station cat and the man in the booking office. Passengers were few and far between. It was closure day. Branch lines had to be axed to stop the railways losing a fortune. The age of the motoring masses had begun, so you needed primitive 19th century kettles on wheels. But not everyone was prepared to see the little train disappear forever. And it was here, 40 years ago, on a route known locally as the Bluebell Line, that a living museum was born. Some very determined railway lovers had decided there would be life after death for steam. And soon there were branches all over southern England. Like on the Isle of Wight, for instance. People who travel by a fast catamaran from Portsmouth to the island are in for a surprise or two. The tube trains on Ride Pier are wartime London underground stock that retire to the seaside. Then there are the Isle of Wight beach huts that look strangely like railway carriages. And that's because a hundred years ago, they were. One by one, they're being turned back into the kind of coaches Queen Victoria used. Steam has returned in the shape of the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. As these four wheelers were withdrawn from service, uh, the bodies were actually sold off. Although the underframes were scrapped, the bodies uh, were preserved as beach huts, chalets, chicken coops, farm outbuildings, whatever you care to think of. Volunteers scoured the island for relics and took them to a safe haven. It happens to be called Haven Street. They didn't have much money or backing, but what they did have was a dream. And they were not prepared to rest until they'd conquered a mountain made of rust. So, because you want to see the things back together and usable. What was a beautiful piece of craftsmanship when it was originally built is now just sort of derelict chicken. And it's nice to sort of see these things back as they were. The little engines that once worked on the Isle of Wight were recovered from various resting places on the mainland and shipped across the Solent. Whole families of islanders rallied round to make the railway viable again. People like Ken and Margaret West and their daughter and son-in-law, Liz and Chris. Mr. West was an engine man with British Rail for half a century. The family's practical knowledge of the island has been put to good use. I'm a guard, the only female guard I've had, and uh, I'm responsible for the train. The train doesn't move unless I say it can. Um, so I'm in charge of him, and if I can leave him behind occasionally, I do try to, but I've never achieved it yet. And... I'm also in charge of the footplate crew to a certain extent, because they can't go without me. So, uh, She's a stickler for timing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. She always tells me I'm late. Yeah. <laughs> Some people look at me sometimes and say, he's a the lady sort of village. You know, I was starting on the rail with Newport, as the engine cleaner, in July 1944. I've you know, done 14, 14 and a half years for British Rail, and retirement kind of means boredom. I retired in the October, from the October to Christmas was terrible. I did know really bad. So, you know, I got the opportunity to come here, and since then, I've never looked back. I'm all in the crag rods. This is done every day. 
everything's going to be a barren. Or any mess of them together. Everything's going to be living inside your world. Once to die. And you're once to die. Possibly wouldn't be our day, but it could be more to die. The railway is only a few miles away from the south coast's biggest cities, but it's in a different world, tucked away in a fold in the hills. Mainlanders don't seem to know it's there. We have one big problem here, and that is that because we're on an island, uh, a lot of people don't realise how easy it is to get here from uh, anywhere along the south coast, indeed from London, for a day via the um, uh, train services to Portsmouth Harbour, the catamaran across to Ride, and the few minutes journey from Ride Pierhead on the electric railway to Smallbrook. You're here. Somehow, this offshore island off the south coast of England has retained two railways, not one, but two. The electric railway between Ride and Shankland using vintage rolling stock, and us between Smallbrook and Wootton running even older rolling stock. This engine was built 120 years ago at Brighton for Victorian commuters and became famous as the Hailing Billy. It was laid to rest on a plinth outside a pub. But now it's back on the rails with a brand new boiler and probably hasn't been in better condition for a century. Take that one with five coaches to 
They do four trips of K's and three trips of Raleigh. And we run out of coal, they teed off. <laughs> and she'd come off, got some more coal, and then, and then carried on. But she done the job. And she pulled five and then we talked about another 130 ton empty. So just didn't let you know it. a lot of people in a great deal of hard work which they do for the love of it and now we're able to show people uh, in first-hand experience just what it was like to travel all those years ago as Queen yeah. Victoria might have done or um, the Edwardians indeed locomotives of Fratton Shed in Portsmouth, right up to the last. Two of them survived, one as a pub sign on Hayling Island, and the other one that we've got back came from Butlin's Holiday Camp at Pathelli, North Wales, uh, where it was on a plinth. In both cases, we successfully returned them to the island and put them both back into traffic. Few people had a shorter walk to work than Kim Chalkley, a retired railway craftsman who acts as a volunteer guard. Once he worked in an industry that employed a million people, and he remains part of the railway family. Living next to a railway is very good, because you don't have to go to work anywhere, you go out the back gate and you're there. There are no wages for the workers, it's a labour of love. Sometimes it does get a bit of a pain. You know, you get old smoke in the garden and the wife moaning about the soot in the washroom. And, you know, but even, even though we put up with that, we're quite happy. You know. 